Hi guys. So today we're going to be making rice and peas. Um, just a little bit of background information. My mom is Jamaican and my dad is Indian. This is just a video for those who are beginning to learn to make rice and peas and hopefully it helps. It definitely helped me to do this method. I'm actually going to use a rice maker to make the rice and peas for this video. Um, I'm just gonna walk you through it. So this is a rice maker I got from Amazon and it does come with a sizing cup, just right here. I'm going to do uh, four cups of rice and four cups of water. What you do is you just pour the four cups in this container right here and there is a water line inside that will tell you where to pour the water to. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using jasmine rice, which is the recommended rice to use. Like I said, this is just a video for people who are beginning to make rice and peas. Trust me, the process to make Jamaican rice and peas a lot more different than this. Um, but this is a good start to do this. Typically, you would wash your jasmine rice and let it soak and drain it. Um, I'm not gonna go through that process today because we want you guys to learn quick. I'm gonna add some salt into here as well. And I'm gonna pour four cups of water. You can also do this all together. I've seen people mix all their ingredients together and cook it in a rice cooker. I had any luck doing that. It's come out a little bit either undercooked or very mushy. So you're just gonna close it, go ahead and turn the power on. And I love this thing because really you just push two buttons. You just hit the power button and white rice. It is going to start to think, I was waiting for it to kick in. And it's gonna do this up until maybe like the last 12 minutes of it cooking. So while that's cooking, we are going to get our ingredients ready. Okay, so you wanna dice up, um, I would say maybe about a third of a pepper. It could be green or it could be orange or red. I prefer green. You wanna do a, if you have a small yellow onion, you can do the whole onion. I like to do about a third of a white onion, and these are the large white onions. You can do a small Roma tomato. I just did half of a Roma tomato, but this one is a little bit big. And then maybe about four garlic cloves. So you're gonna dice all of this up. Add your olive oil in. This is actually a very good uh, pot to cook with. This is by Caraway, and if you cook everything on medium heat, it's just awesome. Nothing sticks to the bottom of this pot, um, and I like to use it because after the rice is finished, it literally just falls off of the pot, like falls out of it. It's so nice. But yeah, I did get a Caraway set. Awesome set, highly recommend it. Okay, so now that we got our oil in there, we're gonna add a little bit of butter. And I don't go like the butter, I love butter. Okay. To have the butter in there just to give it that nice consistency. I don't like a lot of oil, olive oil in my rice and peas. I don't like that kind of olive oilish taste. And before I go on, I just want to remind you guys, please like, share, subscribe if you want to, to this channel. This is a pretty much no niche channel. I love to do it all and it's kind of hard for me to niche down. I like to cook. I like to clean, I like home decor, I like to travel, and hopefully I could just share something with you that you're going to take away from it and that you're going to learn from. And I always appreciate channels like that, channels that's going to educate me and entertain me at the same time, you know? So now you can 
for that little sizzle. You're gonna put your ingredients in. My mom always taught me to clean and cook, which is really good because when I'm done, I usually have nothing to clean except maybe like washing dishes. So I put the green peppers in there, I put the onions and the tomatoes and the garlic. It smells very good. We're gonna let that just simmer. But this is where you do turn the heat up a little bit because you want it to kind of like cook really good but really quick. So you're also gonna add in some fresh thyme. Um, I actually just bought some thyme from the store to like quickly show you guys this video. So this is just the thyme packet. But I put in like a couple of sticks of thyme. This is what gives it that really nice flavor. So my mom actually does it the original way. She uses, um, she uses different types of beans. She uses the kidney beans. She uses the um, pigeon peas, but she actually like soaks her peas overnight and, you know, like I said, washes her rice. I'm going to remind you again, this is the quick method for those who are just starting out, okay? Or for those who just want to make rice and peas, because guess what? Either way it works and it all tastes good. Okay. So you're gonna add in some salt and pepper. This is the habanero sauce by Trader Joe's. It just says habanero hot sauce. It's so, so good. I'm just gonna add in a couple drops of this. Um, it is hot, so it just depends on your level of spice, which you want. I'm just gonna pour some into the cap and just add that in. And I might add a little bit more because we do like spice in this house. Mix that in. And I do like to mix and stir because I don't want anything to get cooked too much. If that makes sense. I don't want it to be like burnt, like little burnt edges of the onions and stuff. You're gonna wait for the tomatoes to melt down and once they've melted down, you're gonna add in your coconut milk. So usually what I use is there is a Goya block and it's just a block of coconut. I will cut it in half and I'll put that fresh coconut block into the pot. I don't have it here. I ran out and it's very hard to find here. I have to like go to the Caribbean market to locate it. Um, so today I'm just gonna use the coconut in the can. Um, and, I, and honestly, I like to recommend the Thai coconut if you are gonna use the canned coconut because it has that thick consistency in it. It's not watery and I usually just take that chunk out and put a spoonful into the pot. First, I'm gonna add a little bit more butter. I actually have my mom and my stepdad coming over today to visit and I know she likes my rice and peas. Probably gonna make some macaroni and cheese with it. And um, I bought some impossible meat. Make a little bit of like some vegan steaks. We don't eat a lot of veggie meat, but you know. Let me just see if this has a, yeah, this is all watery. And this is the Goya can. I don't recommend it. Like I said, I recommend the Thai can because it has that chunk of coconut, coconut in it for that consistency. So you're gonna add this in. About a, a third of the can. I'm not pouring the whole can in here. Now 
Now, if you have the block, what you would do is you would wait for the block to melt down. Once the block melts down, you add in your pigeon peas. And this I do recommend. These are the Boya pigeon peas. They come in a can and they are just fine. They taste awesome. What my mom normally does is she covers it and lets it kind of like bubble and simmer. You can do that if you want as well. So I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit. I'm actually gonna put the top on it and let it simmer. These pots, you do not wanna use any metal. They will scratch the bottom of the pot. And as you know, these are non-stick pots. Once you scratch the bottom of the pot, it does not cook your food the same. Um, so I always use some type of like plastic or wood, um, preferably wood, just because it's healthier when I'm cooking. So now we're gonna add in our pigeon peas to this mix. Turn down the heat a little bit. Just mix that up. actually going to add in a little bit more salt and pepper. Now we're gonna let this cook. It's going to make the beans nice and soft. Once the beans is nice and soft, your rice should be done by then, and you're gonna add the rice in. Okay guys, our rice is done. We're gonna go ahead and take out the pot inside of the rice cooker. And I'm just gonna slowly put the rice into the pot and just kind of mix it in. So would you try this method? And do you think it saves time? You know, I'm all about quick methods as long as it's still healthy and it does the job, it tastes the same. And to be honest with you, I personally cannot tell the difference. Now, if I'm using different peas, like kidney beans, but obviously I can tell the difference because these are pigeon peas. I'm gonna leave that lid off so that the extra liquid can evaporate into the air. It's like it's getting rid of it. And like I said, these pots, amazing. Like I'm scooping and there's absolutely nothing at the bottom which makes the cleanup so easy. Like I just spray water and it will get rid of all the crumbs and you know, food particles. And then I'm scrubbing for like two minutes. There's not really anything to scrub. I'm just cleaning the pot at that point, you know? But such a good pot. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook. Let that kind of blend in and mix together. I'm gonna take a separate spoon. I always like to taste my food as I cook it because I wanna make sure it has enough salt, enough flavor. Um, you know, you never want people to eat your food and then they're like, this needs more salt. You should be able to know that before they have a chance to critique your food. So let's give it a taste. You know, there's nothing like coconut and thyme in your rice. I mean, the, the flavors, you could just, you could taste it. Mm. It's perfect. But thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's helpful, and I hope you make the best beginner rice and peas. And when you become a professional and make it the authentic JA way, tag me so I can see it and see what your rice looks like. But this is just a good starter video, how to make rice and peas, making it separate. And 
doing a quick method. This took me about, about 30 minutes to make, which is a very quick, fast method. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go eat.